let's talk about the CM Punk and AEW possible buyout happening. Uh, mm. Big Dave Meltzer, our very own Dave Meltzer and the Observer brought up that seems like this is something that might be happening and the non-compete seems to be the hang-up as to how long of a non-compete. We know Punk's out for numerous amounts of months. I don't know how how much of a non-compete they want, but, I mean, do you just buy his contract out? I I don't know. I, I, I don't know what... I don't know what you do here. This is... You, you, you're, you're, it is a bad move either way. Side. No matter what yeah, you do, I, there's, it is not a good move. None no. of this was good. The outcome of this will determine 2023. And 2024, yeah, I, <laughs> you know, it, I, I, people don't realize they, they CM Punk was a pivotal. Not saying it was Warner Media's dream to have him or or Discovery's dream, but you know, to have a big star like that on your TV went a very long way. I can, I can say with the level of certainty that the summer of 2021 was a very happy time in regards of who came in, and you can feel the buzz, too. And there's so many things that have happened in the last 14 months since the, la the first dance that have created real bullishness on, on AEW and a real hesitancy on AEW. It's kind of like cryptocurrency right now, where the <laughs> crypto market is, where there's these true believers... And then everybody else who kind of sees things in a completely different way, which is, wow, pro wrestling, people have differing opinions and they're tribalist about it. Me, oh my, I never saw that coming. But you ha if I'm Tony Khan and what I'm hearing about the locker room is that Punk's the least popular guy there, you may, may have to let him go for morale and give him the buyout. Okay, so here's now the question, okay? He leaves. This guy got the itch again to come back. It's a very, I'm, I'm going to use hand quotes here, okay? It's a very different WWE. But the guy running it is also the guy that he was at loggerheads with the most. Sure, but you know what? The enemy of my, the enemy uh, of my yeah. enemy. Yeah, you're right. So if you're Tony, and listen, I, I, I have no, I have no insight on this. And I'm going to tell you something. 99% of people over there have no insight on this. This is no. this has been tight-lipped because it's a, it's a major legal matter. Also, the consequences of your decision making, no matter what it is, has a astronomical fallout from it. Whether or not the I mean the best case scenario for for AEW would be you buy him out and this guy says, "I'm never wrestling again" and he doesn't wrestle. The bitterness or here. Has I, to I be saw somebody mention this. I saw somebody mention this on Twitter the other day. If ROH is going to be its own standalone thing, put Punk on ROH. Do you think I? I cannot see him wanting to be with Tony right now. I. If I'm just, I'm appositing theories. Yeah. If I understand, I get it. I get, I get what you're thinking. Right? He's away from it. the people he doesn't want to work with. He won't yeah, have. But to I don't deal think he wants to work with Tony. Then I who's he going to work with? It. He's going to go back to he's going to go back to IWA Mid South. <laughs> yeah, he's going to work with I'm, Ian not, Rotten, I, yeah. I, I'm being facetious, no, obviously, no, but Listen, does he go he, to Japan? No, there's so many. There's, there's one. There's one place. Uh, Catalyst there's Wrestling. One place. Catalyst Wrestling. Yeah, you can pay him. <laughs> you can buy out that contract. No, I, I, I may have to go WWE. to the bank. Yeah, it's yeah. WWE. If he is going to wrestle, it it is WWE. And you know what? I would have said this will never happen. Until this happened, and it's wrestling, and we all know it's wrestling. Yeah, and, and what people, if people, you know, they they will they will say they will never wrestle, they will never do this, they will never do that, but they at the end of the day, the money talks, and it's a money business, and these yeah. and, and a lot of the talent, especially talent that came up in CM Punk's era, see, they were told C, CM Punk, Claudio, uh, Danielson. All these guys, they were not the picked guys to run the business. They weren't set to be the future of the industry, but they happened to become the future, especially CM Punk. You know, 2002, 2003, I remember reading 
you know, on the WrestleZone forums and, and the uh, just online, just reading how great this guy is and how he's the future of wrestling. And, you know, he did end up becoming the future of wrestling for a number of years. He did end up becoming the number one guy. But do, do you want to give up that possibility to make all that money now with WWE, you know, playing this this battle of optics and perception against AEW? If- if that promo, com- he comes out, shakes hands with, with Hunter, and, and he buries at w- AEW? Yeah. yeah, the WWE would jump on that in a freaking heartbeat. And also, if I'm Comcast or Fox, and I see this massive opportunity, and I'm the WWE, and I'm realizing right now, my deals are up in just about 24 months. Yep. I can play both of these sides to get Punk, not have to pay him because you're going to have to pay him a lot. And there's a lot of advantages there. And if I'm NBC Universal right now and I have so much invested in the WWE with not only the deal with USA, but also Peacock and how that's the most, you know, the USA network used to be the number one network in cable. And now it's stuck in the middle and it's had a precipitous drop over the last few years because of basically they've pivoted programming. Yeah. And the you know NBCSN dying, a lot of that programming went over there. So USA is in a weird space when it comes to what's on the air there and the philosophy. So the WWE is the biggest thing they have and the only thing that really can cover them to get a bigger rating. So I'm looking at that and I'm like, I will give him a ton of money. I will give him a development deal with Peacock to bring him over and have him wrestle. Well, Fox because, wanted him. You remember Fox yeah, wanted uh, yeah, WWE. He was on backstage. To, he he was, but initially they wanted him for WWE. They wanted WWE to bring him back. And I think I think Dave mentioned this on the last episode of Observer Radio. I think there was some nonsense that WWE nonchalant was like, oh yeah, he wants too much money. We can't afford him. Yeah. I could I can definitely see that happening because WWE is content and all of the and we keep hearing rumors and you and I keep having these conversations of like are they going to sell when are they going to sell these things look like they're going to sell and that's you know been water cooler content for the WWE for I would say since the Peacock deal maybe even since the Fox deal listen also I uh, it really depends on how you know what Nick Khan is thinking as well we know about Triple H and the history he has but you know we don't know the the history between or or the relationship between Nick Khan and CM Punk uh, we don't know how, you know, I, j- just I'm going back to that to that scrum and him saying that I'm, I work with children and, and he really the story from this, you know, months later is he pretty much buried the company and said this company is extremely immature and nobody knows how to handle themselves. Uh, I mean, he shows up on Monday Night Raw or SmackDown. He cuts the same exact promo. He's a baby face. Yeah. It's so it's so weird. It is so weird to me. This the whole perception of it, all this stuff. Yeah. It, listen, and and I hope maybe you know there's still what it could still work out, right? There's always a possibility you work it out and you and you say the best case scenario. Everybody everybody just realizes how absurd all of this was. Yeah. And they learn from it and they move on. But it's professional wrestling and the, nobody learns the from the wrestling mistakes. promoter in my head is just yelling, "Make money off I of know, this!" I know. They could sell if they did Punk Omega. They could sell out a stadium. Of course they could. Straight up, they could they sell could. out no, 100% a stadium. One hundred percent, they would. I, I'm I I I've always been very careful by saying that AEW could sell out a stadium. Uh, I if that's your main match with the story that 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 you know what happened with reality, sure. But is it going to happen? I don't know. It, it, can you can is CM Punk going to go back there? I don't think so. Does CM Punk want to go back? Who knows? Just a very unfortunate situation for everybody. Everybody involved. Very unfortunate. I, yeah. you know, everybody likes to pick a side and they like to talk about this and you want, you want to pick any side or the bucks or whatever. It, there's nobody, nobody won. Everybody lost here. And, and you know who lost the most? Tony Khan. Tony yeah. lost the most. So if these guys respect Tony the way that they've said they respect them and they are so thankful and uh, CM Punk was crying during the media scrum when, when Tony announced that he bought the ring of honor library and, Punk is saying how happy he is that it's in the right hands. His legacy is in the right hands. If that's how you think about this guy, you would not have done what you did. 
I, you know, and I'm not an apologist for Tony. You know, I'm not. A, I, I really, I, I, I don't know. CM Punk was not right in this. Sometimes, uh, and, and the Bucks weren't right, and you know, none of nobody was correct. Everybody, this was a this total was, disaster. Sometimes you hate someone more so much that your love for other people kind of gets lost in the shadows. That's probably what happened here. And I'm not capping or caping for anybody. This is a horrible situation, but there's not going to be a clean solution from this. It's no, going to be won't. ugly, and it's going to be one of those things that we keep talking about for the end of time. Absolutely.